Hey everybody. So the uh, Cities Without Number Kickstarter is live and um, yeah, it's totally backed. Um, I'm actually working on this book. I'm one of the illustrators for, uh, for the book and uh, yeah, I haven't been doing a lot of painting in the studio recently. I haven't been doing digital painting because I've been, I mean, I haven't been doing physical painting in the studio. I've been digital painting on the tablet working on illustrations for this book. <laughs> um, that's part of the reason why I haven't done any painting videos recently. Um, so I have, uh, I have the book. I have a, a beta of the book. This is uh, the 0.09 beta. And um, this, um, it's, it's not because I'm working on the book. It's because uh, um, Kevin just, uh, he... He released it for people like backers and but it's also it says in the Kickstarter like if you want to um, share the uh, share the beta and um, uh, you know like I, I checked I looked <laughs> I'm allowed to do this um, so I'll put the um, I'll put the the Google Drive somewhere for uh, for the beta if you want to check this out for yourself. Um, so, uh, yeah, things are, it's, it's, the rules are pretty much the same as, uh, Stars Without Number as far as, like, skills and, um, the, the whole game mechanics, like, um, we've got some new backgrounds and stuff, um, and, uh, but, you know, a lot of these, they're, they're the cyberpunk flavored, but they aren't too, too different from um, the Stars Without Number or Worlds Without Number. Um, like, you get the idea, right? Game mechanics are pretty much the same. So, um, what is new, though, is um, there is uh, a big focus on um, um, doing hacking and cyberspace and things like that which is very cool and um there's also it, it kind of has a, a different um a different flavor to it, it i think it, it feels a little more kind of like 80s 90s like splatterpunk um uh, sort of like like robocop or like hardware you know, movies like that where, like, combat is super, super deadly and it's just a dirty kind of uh, world. And very cool, like, going back and forth to Kevin, like, talking about it, like, what he wanted for the illustrations and stuff. It it sounds like he has a, a pretty clear vision for it. Um, But, you know, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about the uh the sandbox versus the railroad right because this is very much very very much designed to be a sandbox game and um so you know what what does that what does that mean right what is like the sandbox versus the railroad um like i am definitely not the first person to do a video talking about the sandbox versus the railroad right Um, so, like, Matt Colville did a great video about it a while ago, kind of talking about, well, six years ago, um, talking about, uh, he, he made kind of the, the classic comparison between a Tolkien in The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, right? So in The Lord of the Rings, there's always, there's Sauron, and, and he's the big bad. And he is lurking around, you know, he's he's doing something in the background. He's watching with, you know, through the ring or he's he's sending armies after the the, the heroes and, and trying to stop them from, you know, taking the ring to Mount Doom, which is like the 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 uh, the climax and, and the end of the story. And then you have like Sam and and Frodo like 
oh Sam, oh Frodo, you 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 you've made it, you're alive, and 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 all that, right? Um, and then that's like the 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 climax, and then the story has a beginning, a middle, and an end, right? And um, the, I, I would I I think that is a good example of the railroad, where it almost if you if you run a campaign like that, it feels very much like you're forcing your players to go down a direction that if they don't do the thing then um then in this case you know it's like the world ends just sauron like takes over the world and his armies just destroy everything and um and you know there's a very clear and present danger and a story and and things just have to progress just so right and um and so and then a sandbox is totally on the other end, right? A sandbox is where you like build a world for your players and then maybe you set up some conflicts. There are things that are happening in the world. Um, typically in a sandbox game, you, you want to have like factions that are butting up against each other where they are uh, don't get along or they just have like very different ideas or goals that create friction and maybe some faction is really powerful and then some faction is weaker and they have like influence over the other one and then the, it's it's more like um like the real world um and then maybe there isn't any good guys maybe you know there's no evil army and, a, and then a good army it's it's kind of more gray area as far as who's good and who's bad you know it's less black and white um, so one of my all-time favorite sandbox games, uh, and this is kind of interesting because like I was looking at my, uh, my channels analytics the other day and, um, YouTube will show you like what your, what your most popular videos are and like how many views they're getting like in a day or hour or whatever and then my two most popular videos right now are about kenshi uh the the video game kenshi and stars without number which are like my two favorite sandbox rpgs or they're up there you know like for, yeah they're up there the top top two like sandbox rpgs for me all right so uh in in kenshi but there are no real good guys. Um, there is no quests. There are no NPCs that are going to hand you, you know, like your, your starter set of like sword and armor or whatever. Um, basically, you start out as a nobody and you're just going to get your ass kicked and you're going to get up and, you know, through sheer, sheer willpower and determination and getting your ass handed to you again and again and again. You're going to get stronger and stronger and eventually you're going to be able to take on the biggest baddest kids on the block right and depending on who that is because there isn't a there are big bads there are big bad evil characters in the game who are doing horrible things in the world and you can choose to stop them or you can choose to not stop them you can choose to be on their side you know you can choose to live peacefully under their rule and uh, sort of just do your own thing and or you know operate on the the fringes which is probably what you're going to have to be doing for the majority of the time when you're a fresh you know new low b player right but if you don't want to you know if you don't want to deal with that if you don't you don't want if you're you feel like you aren't strong enough or you you want to explore other things in the world, you can absolutely 100% do that and just explore the world and just kind of do whatever you want to do, right? So those are like kind of two opposite ends of the spectrum. A railroad is you are 100% on rails, and um, you have to go in one direction. There is one way. And the, the DM is like, 
you know, you here's the situation, here's where your characters are, either they survive or they don't. And maybe they don't even really give a crap about anything to do with your characters, like the backstory or, um, you know, what their goals and motivations or what their their choices are like. Like their choices could totally not matter at all. And everything is on completely on rails and it's just happening whether you like it or not. And that's, I think, the main complaint that people would have about that style of game is that you have no agency, you have no choices. Or if you do have choices, it doesn't feel like they matter. Or there's the illusion of choice where every, every path like leads to the same place. Um, and it's just that it's an illusion that you have some choice, right? And then in the sandbox, it's just, you know, do whatever you want. Um, and I think that the, the complaint that people, main complaint that people would have with that is that it's the quick sandbox where you just don't, you don't have any real goals. You don't have any, um, you're, you're just, you're just kind of there and like, you, you know, you, you can totally just lose direction and, um, uh, honestly, I would much, much prefer to be in that situation where it's just, there's just no, uh, no real structure to kind of just do whatever, than be completely on rails and just have to go in one direction and have no choices, no agency. I remember there was a game that I played in where we were, um, we were like gladiators that were trapped or, you know, we were slaves and we had to, uh, to fight in these uh, fighting pits and uh and i thought you know it's an interesting like backstory for a character but it was like this the every game was like kind of the same thing where it was just like you know we were thrown into the arena and made to fight for everyone's entertainment and we just didn't really get to do anything else like we didn't get we were you know slaves and um it felt like it just had absolutely no control over anything in the game, had no choices and anything that, um, anything that, that my player had was, was given to them. And, and it, you know, it had to, um, uh, if, if it, that, that's, that's kind of how the railroad feels to me. It feels like you just have no, no choices and, and nothing that you do really matters and, and I think that that's why I vastly prefer kind of the sandbox, right? And then there's other people that would say, well, you know, there's like the, the, the water slide option, right? Where you, you know, you have the, like a story, you have a beginning and a middle and an end, um, but you let your players explore, you know, you let them do things in the world. Um, and I think that a good example of this would be most kind of D&D where it's like there is some kind of big bad evil guy at the end of the, you know, there is some clear and present danger. There is some thing that is, has some problem that has to be dealt with that is somewhere in the world. And if you don't do something about it, then pandemonium, right? Um, but do you have to have a big bad? Do you have to have good guys and bad guys, you know, do you have to have like characters that are comically evil and bad or, you know, it's like, it's, it's again, like, it's like the Hobbit versus the Lord of the Rings where, you know, Sauron is just comically evil. Like he is so evil. And it's like, why, why is he that way? Why does he want to destroy the world? Well, he's just bad. He's just really, really bad. He's just a, really evil guy um you know what made him that way well and 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 like i'm not going to get into like rings of power or whatever hot garbage but um and then you know in the hobbit it's like sort of more of like a journey where the character goes out for an adventure and then their character develops like they change over the course of their adventure Kind of exploring the world and it's a it's a um it's a journey right and and that's that is the the story is kind of like this uh 
coming of age story or like the hero's journey and all of the 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 interesting interactions and in characters and friends and enemies that they meet along the way right so um it is it harder to run a sandbox game than a game that's on the rails i would say no i would say no because um you're gonna have to do some world building either way and um I would say that it's easier to run into problems if you're railroading your characters, like um, a kind of like player versus GM stuff where you have that terrorist that just wants to light everything on fire because they f they feel like they don't have any control over what's happening and then they're kind of like lashing out, you know, or like people just, they don't like it. You know, they like to have characters that they can develop and, and, and make choices and make meaningful choices that, that have an effect on the, their world. Um, so, yeah, so about, um, about cities without number though, right? Um, so back to, back to this, um, <clears throat> a lot of the, you know, a lot of the things are, are going to feel the same. The stars without number, um, but uh, I wanted to take a look at some of the tables, right? So it's the same kind of as like stars without number, or worlds without number, where like the first half of the book is going to be like building your character and um, like gear and 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 here's how like hacking happens and and here's you know drones and weapons and armor and all that stuff. Um, I am excited to see this, the, all of the, the new stuff related to, um, like cyberspace and, and doing like hacking and stuff like that, because it's, it's such a cornerstone of like a cyberpunk, you know, the, the like hacking and, um, doing that kind of stuff. But, you know, same, the same as, um, Stars Without Number and Wells Without Number, the, like the second half of the book is going to be about, or like the majority of the second half of the book is going to be about world building. Um, so if we get down to like page, I think it's 100. Oh wait, here we go. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff that's related to hacking, which I think is super cool. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to get super into this because Kevin said that he's still kind of working on the cyberspace stuff and hacking and um but um i think it's cool because um i would love to see the hacker be like a, a play a bigger role in um in a, a cyberpunk games like um you know one thing that that kevin says in um stars without number is uh he says you know do not force combat on your players like um if you want that to, if you if you want to let her if your players want to avoid fights right if they're not interested in fighting and they want to do other things like they want to hack like the the mainframe and like they're kind of wimpy and and they want to like sneak around or they want to do like a stealth thing where they like sneak in and, and get into the safe and then, you know, get the objective out and like have like a team, like maybe somebody's like a really good driver and, uh, you know, like, like a, like running heist or something like that, like an Ocean's Eleven kind of game or something like that. And they don't want to kill anybody, you know, or they don't want to fight because that's just, it's like if, if, if guns have to come out and people have to start shooting, then it's like the, the mission has kind of failed, you know, like, let them do that and let them level up, you know, don't, don't base everything on combat. Don't, don't, you know, don't base your encounters on like challenge rating and like monsters of the week, like having some kind of new fight, you know, every week and, and, and having it be like the proper like challenge rating for your, for your characters, like focus on the story, you know, focus on like world building role playing and 
and um, having like creative and interesting approaches to to problems and conflicts and let your players you know like make friends with the 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 um the gang or the you know the corpos or or whatever and like sort of navigate the world and let that be the main focus instead of um like the fighting and shooting like if you do want to make if you do want to make your your campaigns really like combat heavy then make sure that you do something to give your players some more hit points or make them a little more heroic you know so that um they don't just get get hit by one shot and then you know um just saying but um so i wanted to take a look at the sandbox <laughs> stuff right because this to me like this is one of the coolest things about the um uh Kevin's, you know, Sunday nominees games is the, um, is like the, the sandbox stuff and all of the, uh, the GM tools that he gives people, uh, for world building, right? Um, so I, yeah, I really like this stuff. I get inspired, like it's kind of its own little mini game where, um, you know, he does, he does kind of give you some like some guidelines on um, like how to write this stuff, you know, like um, uh, consumerism, uh, to live is to buy, happiness consists of buying the right products, subscribing to the right service, paying the right fees. Like he talks about some of the ideas that are, you know, like important to uh, cyberpunk, right? But then he also, he also gets into, um, like, he, he gives you lots of tables to roll on. Like, um, what's the, what's a, a big problem in this world? Um, climate change. Like, say that the, you know, the ozone layer is just destroyed, and then you go outside and you spend, you know, like, a certain amount of time outside in the sun, and you, you immediately get cancer or something, you know, something like that, or it's just, acid rain or just what what have you right um or you know some kind of a, a huge um uh global recession or um uh let's see like natural disasters or a plague or um different types of things like that right so he gives you all kinds of tables to roll on and it's almost like its own mini game where you can just you can roll on the tables and then you can um, uh, just come up with something just, you know, like random based on the tables. And um, like, uh, let's see, um, anarchy, the region has spent some time in a state of ungoverned lawlessness, a condition that might still persist. Local authority rests with those who can provide resources or who can bring violent force to bear um an awakening a, a great ideal cause or religious uh, religion caught fire in the region inspiring large numbers of people to follow it at even, even great even at great personal cost at least one major social institution was born of this awakening like um I'm, i get really inspired like this that sounds like uh like a religious awakening in a cyberpunk setting this sounds pretty good, and um, like I'm, I'm thinking of um, like genetic grunge. If you ever read it, the, it was a heavy metal series. Um, it might still be out there in print, but it was, it was pretty good. Um, but there's like a, a religious, um, like a, a kind of like a religious war that was happening in a cyberpunk setting. So you know, like I get, I get super inspired when I see this stuff, and like to me it is more about the world and like doing uh, world building and then having just an interesting, cool place for your players to explore and interact with. And um, the story can come second. Like, like what I mean by that is um, let your players do what they want to do. You know, you can have like conflicts and you can have things that are happening and, um, you know, you can 
have like a patron or something who hires them to do a job, but um, let them approach it how they want to. And uh, like, if like, let me see, there's a, there's a, there's a YouTuber who, who I watch, uh, who I like, and he's a, he's a, a writer and, but he runs lots of different games like uh, Seth, Seth Skorkowski. Um, he, um, he, he is a writer, like he does write games. He, he writes like modules and stuff like, um, for like Call of Cthulhu and, and Traveler and stuff like that. Like he turned me on to Traveler and, um, he, um, but, but one time I watched one of his videos and, um, like not only does he write, you know, books or sorry, modules for games and stuff, he also writes like novels right? Like horror novels and fantasy, pulp fantasy, kind of stuff like that. And, um, and then he did an, an AMA, he did a, like an ask me anything on his channel. And, um, uh, somebody asked him, they said, do you, um, do you typically like have a story first, um, where like, have any of your books, have you turned any of your books into games where you had a story in mind and then you wanted to kind of see how things played out or like have your have your um have your stories influenced your games or have your games influenced your stories your books and he said that it was the latter he said um like usually when he is when he's writing like when he's coming up with um, with his books, typically his players will do things in his games where he'd be like, "That's good. I'm right. You know, I'm putting that in a book, not the other way around." Where he's like, "I'm going to force my players to do this story how I want them to." He's he's more using his his players and characters in his games as inspiration to write his stories, if that makes sense. And then. Um, like uh, Joss Whedon, you know, famously, um, supposedly Firefly was based on a game of Traveler that he ran for um, for his friends in, in college, right? So um, I think that if you if you focus on the world and you have like a really interesting setting, and then you kind of let your players like tell you what they want to do then the story writes itself. That's kind of how I feel about it. And that's, that's like maybe, um, maybe influenced by my D GM style, you know, and like how I prefer to run games. But like I did a poll on my channel and it was kind of interesting because not that many replied, not that many people replied to it, but everybody that replied to it said, I prefer the sandbox. I prefer that style of game where I can kind of do what I want and um, and then the 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 GM is kind of there to a sort of um, give guidance you know and uh, and I don't I don't really like the the theme park ride I don't like the um, the, the story where everything is on rails, I have no no meaningful choices, and then we just go from one encounter to the other, and the GM decides what happens, right? So that's one of the things that I, that I really, really appreciate about Kevin's games is that um, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's all about the, the world building. And um, just gives you like tons and tons of tools for coming up with really interesting stories. Like you can, you can literally like you can just roll on these tables, and then uh, come up with something really interesting. And then the stories kind of write themselves, you know. And you have interesting character or interesting players and interesting characters. You let them approach the problems how they want to, and then the stories are just going to write themselves. Um, so, you know, like, I, I like that this, so we have, like, um, kind of, like, the world. We have, like, the big the big setting. Like, we have, um, 
there there could be like um, mass terrorism or you know like some kind of a messianic um, cult leader or infrastructure collapse right some kind of big problem right it doesn't need to be a big bad it doesn't need to be a, a person you know an enemy or whatever there could just be some like forces at work right nuclear winter um, uh, some kind of a, a junta or something like that right and then you get more into the nitty-gritty like you 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 pick um, like uh, what are the what are the, the major corporations what are the major like who are, who are the main like government powers? Do the government and then the the megacorps like do they do they butt heads? Do they do they fight with each other? Do they cooperate with each other? Does one have influence over the other? Um, what about the gangs? You know, um, what are what are um, what are the like different gangs that are in the area? Like what is the um, what does the district look like? what year is it and um and things like that right so you know like i i get super into this stuff like i i i enjoy the the um writing game like world building part uh and then there's just so many so many tables in here there's so many so many um like great great the resources to, to draw on um i love that okay we have like a whole um section on on megacorps like how to create a megacorp and like are they um a like a mining megacorp uh, rapacious always trying to gobble up and assimilate smaller competitors or um financial services innovative coming up with daring new ideas and um like I, I like that you have like these corporations and then they're, you know, they aren't just totally motivated by greed. Like, um, <laughs> I mean, maybe most corporations are, but, uh, but there's, there's other things like, um, they, they want, uh, like power or influence or they have like specific, um, sort of MOs and, and ways that they operate. Right, and then we've got we've got tables for gangs. Um, what recently happened with this gang? Um, a corpo hired them to do some dirty work. Uh, they badly lost a fight with another gang. They stole something really valuable. Um, and some of these are really great. And you know, NPC tables and um, like I remember when um, when I first started playing Stars Without Number, I was kind of like. Oh, you know, there's no, um, there's no, like, monster manual. <laughs> there's no challenge rating on these, uh, like, M these uh, NPCs or whatever. Like, um, how do I build fights, you know, for my characters and make sure that I have the right, the right, like, challenge fight, challenge rating and stuff like that. And then the more I played it, I was like, most of my players don't even really want to be forced to fight at all. They would rather come up with some kind of creative, sneaky way to uh, like sneak in and uh, hack the mainframe and get the you know get the thing for their patron and then sneak out and do things that way. Um, and I'm convinced that a lot of that is just baked into the game. That there's something about the mechanics and the way that things are um, sort of structured in the game and the the amount the, the fact that when you start out you have like single digit hit points and uh, <laughs> You know, like you could have like two hit points, you could get really unlucky. But uh, anyways, yeah, I'm gonna put this up. I'm gonna put the uh, this beta up. If you want to check it out, if you want to take a look at it, and yeah, like I said, you know, it's not just because I'm uh, like working on the book. That's not why I have access to this. Like Kevin, um, he. Uh, when when I first started talking to him, um, he was like, you know, I, I, I would prefer to just release this stuff uh, through the Kickstarter and then put it out there for free and um, have like the free PDF version out there. So I want to buy rights to illustrations. I don't want to like license out or, you know, do uh, 
like I just want to buy the rights outright and, and handle things this way and this way. Uh, but you know, he, he is totally cool with me, like sharing illustrations that I've been working on with the book and like sharing the, the book and stuff. And like, it's, you know, he says that in the Kickstarter and Kevin's a great guy. Definitely feels better working with somebody like him than working with, uh, certain other companies who we won't talk about right here. But, uh, yeah, so I think that's going to be it, you guys. And, uh, Take care of yourselves, and I will see you in the next one, and yeah, have a better one.